So I gave Claire Cunningham uh, from County Loud a call the other day. As I say, she's, and you'll hear me mention it in the conversation, I follow her on social media and that, and she's just a, a great woman altogether for getting out there and really doing her own thing. And no more than myself, there's nobody here, there's no producer sitting in a, in a control room here uh, doing everything. There's no social media team. Everything you see, that comes through me. And Claire does the same thing with her songwriting and her music. And she was on her way home from a festival the other day, and I said I'd give her a call in the car. So we set up a little call there, and I rang her on WhatsApp, and we had a little bit of a chat about her conversation, a bit of a catch up there. So this is Claire Cunningham from County Loud about making the trip to America, to Nashville, Tennessee, to the home of songwriting, country music in America, and trying to make it there and make it she has, ladies and gentlemen. So enjoy this one, and I'll be back to you to sign off before we're done with this episode of the Global Gale podcast. <laughs> I was going to ask, how did a girl from Collin and County Loud find herself somewhere on the road between uh, Florida and Nashville after playing rock and a festival all weekend in that part of the world? Yeah, a lot of people have asked like why I've chosen where I've gone, and obviously I'm based in Nashville. Um, I kind of when I was in Sweden um, and I was wrapping up where I was and what I was doing there with the girls and Thunder Mother. I looked into America and then I figured that Nashville was a great music scene, not just for the scene that's there, but the business side of it too, because I'm not a country artist per se, but, you know, the site is known for its hospitality and, you know, there's a great scene. I LA as well would be more my, like, personal lifestyle choice. Uh, for the ocean and the fitness and stuff like that, but I knew Nashville was more sustainable for a, for a, for a move for music. So that's kind of like what I started looking into, and I was correct. You know, it's a great, great, great place. Um, we hand kind of like people who are interested in music you mentioned country music and Nashville there the two go hand in hand you know but from the business perspective I mean you have to make a living doing what you're doing right the songs you write and the performances that you do every week that's what you make your money at is it is it just as easy as rocking up and saying look I have a bag full of great songs here who wants to buy them or how do you go about establishing yourself in a place like that well you know and I'm on a visa as a recording artist as well so there's a it's not just as simple as doing what you've just said but in a roundabout way it's more about the network and the connections and the friendships you make so I think that whole pipe dream of going to somewhere and thinking you're going to get discovered I think those days are a little bit outnumbered now Mm. it still exists of course but I think the way the industry has gone if you're riding with people who you know have an in with you know synchronization that's such as movies or TV or who can get a song out to a bigger artist like it's all about those kind of connections and how do you go about that did you know anybody there before you moved over to Nashville or you know did you just sort of go in cold and say right here I am give me a gig here's a song kind of thing no I went in cold but again like I was explaining the whole visa process which I'm not sure people there's no point going into that but you know, you can't just, I couldn't just come over. I had to, my specific visa was for a specific, you know, uh, area in the music industry. But no, to answer your question, I did anybody. So I've worked extremely hard to get to where I am right now and the relationships that I've built. But it's a great place because if you show good work ethic and that you're willing to do the work and, you know, not listen to the masses, you know, you'll you'll be successful anywhere you go. That's not just natural. But there is, it's a good community and people are very aware that when people come over first, they're willing to help you. But you can't, like a lot of people come over and think, I never asked anybody to help me either. You know, I wanted to show my work ethic. I didn't want to use anything I did in my past to get a door open that's not my style but a lot of people will do that here but you know it's few and far between people are gonna will help you if they know you're willing to work so 
What was that like in the very beginning? Because I remember, you know, you when we got to know each other first, you'd moved over to Sweden to play with a rock band called Thunder Mother and you had a, a fairly serious amount of success with that band. And then, you know, you decided that you wanted to do something different and you made the decision to move to America. Uh, how easy was it to make that decision? Because, you know, I mean, you were taking a very big risk in going over there. It would have been easy enough to rock around Europe and play in pubs every night of the week and that kind of thing. But that wasn't the life that you wanted for yourself. Well, no, my mental health was suffering um, for many reasons. Um, And I had to make a decision like, you know, what is it and where am I going? Uh, But no, definitely not. It wasn't an overnight decision and it wasn't something I could just do. You know, I was signed and we I had to make that decision and departure like what people don't realize that departure took about a year to do. It mm. wasn't just, okay, I'm, I'm away now. <laughs> <Yeah>. Good luck. <laughs> so yeah. See you. And also it took a year to get a visa together and all the paperwork. So again, I'm not going to bore people with that side of things, but it's just, it's, it's not an overnight uh, decision and an overnight, um, you know, process. So um, yeah, I mean, Ideally, I thought my life was set in stone there, and I, you know, but nothing, nothing is, I guess, and um, you know, I, I had to work even harder when I was trying to leave the country as well as when I got into it. So, but you know, that's that's a whole of <laughs> that's a whole other story. Nobody needs to know. <laughs> Can you remember your first gig when when you got to Nashville? Can you remember where the first place you played was and, and how it felt to be getting up on the stage there all in your lonesome? Um, yeah, well, actually, I had uh, I was visiting Nashville um, prior to um, me actually getting the the full move there. I think it was I made a move in May, but in March of that year, I went to visit and I actually. Um, got invited up to do oh it was something in Tootsies I remember but that I don't do that scene anymore but that was uh, that was a bit of a, an opener because uh, the band that night had actually said well listen come and see us down further on down the road we'd love to get you back up like you're a little bit different <laughs> and um, I did and I started making the connection so um you know, but I was there. I'm a, I'm a writer. I'm a songwriter and performing artist initially. So I, that was never the plan to do any of those kind of things. But you know, I did a little a little bit of that hmm. when I first got my feet wet in town. You know, hmm. it's, um, got, it's kind of one um, of those things. Yeah, where it felt you, great. You know. Yeah, when you don't really, you feel you you kind of don't have a choice when you arrive somewhere. And as you mentioned, you just want to show people that you're prepared to graft and to get stuck into these things. You know. Oh yeah. And it's not just the performance side, it was the writing side as well. So, you know, when you get to Nashville, you can't just walk into a room and write with people. If you don't know somebody, I had to get my face out there, you know. But I'm I'm a solo writer as well. But, you know, it's all about the co-writing in Nashville. So, hmm. you know, that's another side of it that doesn't happen in other states is that you build relationships to write songs with people and then start doing the process that way as well. How easy do you find that to do? Because, you know, it can be a very sort of a, a personal thing. It, it can rely very much on chemistry when you're sitting down to write a song with somebody, you know. Um, do you find it easy to write with different people? Do you prefer to write on your own or, or what's the process like for you? Well, so here's the thing, and people ask me this, like, it's it's the process of writing songs is extremely different in every aspect of you know of the making of a song but the way Nashville runs and the way I don't do it anymore is that it's um two people or three people come together sometimes you know them sometimes you don't and then you're stuck in a room and you come up with a concept and you write a song that to me is just it's fine but as an artist who wants to talk about real life topics and put emotion and feeling into it that doesn't work very well with me like it has in the past certain songs have come out and um, but 
it's a formula way of writing and then things have to rhyme together it must be under three minutes it's all the you know just gurgitated formulated stuff and it works but it's a very natural way of doing it so uh, when the pandemic hit that's when I started writing on my own and they're the songs that are standing ground now and they're the ones that people connect with the most but it's I say it's a solo right, but it really is the Lord giving me a message and I'm just a conduit to it, you know. Hmm. And you find it easier to do that in yourself? It's easier to, to do that by yourself, should I say, rather than in sort of communion with other people? It's not that it's easier, but when it's just me, hmm. I can write what I feel and I, there's no judgment in made and there's nobody saying oh I don't think we should put that word there and that doesn't rhyme with that and that's okay because if it's a good hit writer like it depends on who you're writing with and what their personal life is and what their experience is because if I get into a room and I'm writing with somebody who's brand new to the game they're you know they might have an awesome concept but they might not have you know it's just it's so different and diverse depending on who you're in a room with um, but you know what I love it's if, if I'm in a room and I was writing with somebody who is an accomplished guitarist or a pianist or something then the music it, it gives me more motivation and it gives me more of emotion so music per se I'm limited so then I feel like that right might be limited but again it's just it's no two writing sessions are ever the same so if there's no one blank that applies to all um, I could give you like a million different scenarios but it's just it's, it's a different process for every single time you know hmm. um, You've been fairly picking up a whole bunch of awards since you went over there Claire there's all sorts of uh, a songwriter achievement award there uh, in 2022 for a song called This Is Me uh, you've been a five time nominee at the Josie Music Awards best music video for Angel of the Emerald Isle and a lot of your songs uh, or not a lot of them but certainly you have a good few songs that, that deal with Ireland as a subject how do you sort of retain your connection to Ireland is it something that you think about when you sit down to write songs or is it just, is it just in the moment No they're in the moment like Every single Irish song, apart from Angel of the Emerald Isle, which I co-wrote with a lovely gentleman called Patrick McManus, um, they've all been in the moment. Um, and they've been just those kind of rights that... And No Place Like Home was written with another guy too, uh, Colin Rowe. But even the new ones, like I've, I've got one that's going to come out again probably next year. And I just written in my car like my writing process has changed over the years but if it's if it's anything to do at home it usually just comes as a download mm. to me so it's and that's hard to explain to somebody like nobody who's not a writer can understand what like when you're just getting a message from above and it's just like coming down onto paper it's 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 not something i can you know, it's it's hard to explain. It's it's like a feeling that you'd love to explain it, but it's not it's not possible because it's just in the moment. But and sometimes I'll think, right, I have a project or I'd like to put out maybe another if I was saying now to myself I'm putting out a Celtic thing, I'd have to go into the process and think, right, I'm going to actually write now and I'm gonna write with a purpose. But I typically don't write that way anymore. Hmm. I like it to be natural and for me to be feeling something in the moment and if I have an idea then I can write about it or bring it to somebody and maybe say hey I'd like to write about this you know hmm. Do you find that, you know, when you speak to people, obviously, I mean, Nashville has been a, been a place where music has been at the centre of it for maybe a hundred years or more. Do you find that when you come in, you know, to uh, to any sort of a meeting, a songwriting meeting or a business meeting, and you say, I'm Claire Cunningham, I'm from Ireland, I'm a singer and I'm a songwriter, do you find that people have certain expectations of you in that case? Um, no, they don't have expectations, but they definitely... They like the foreign side of things, you know, but that doesn't mean I get things either because I advocate for myself. I'm my own manager. I'm my own booking agent. And I even like it's wild. Like people are always asking, like, why aren't you here? Why aren't you doing this? Or why aren't you playing that festival? I'm like, well, I did email them. So unless you have an advocate for you, 
like I sent out 300 and something emails last year and I got one Celtic festival back. Wow. Like, and I'm an Irish girl in America with the accent because apparently they love that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and the songs, and yet I still can't get booked because, and that's what I mean about it's all about who you know and what, and, and the connections and the network and you do. And once you have your foot in the door, hmm. you know, it was the same when I went to Stockholm. You know, I but that was different because I was signed with a band and it was already a process that was started. So I didn't have to do the groundwork as much there. But for my solo career, I did. I had to prove myself. And I feel like I always have to. And I want to. I, I'm, I'm, you know, but there, I guess there's a, maybe a small expectation. But you see, I don't just do Celtic music. Mm. So that also is, you know. I, I, I do a lot of different styles, but it's I'm trying to predominantly like lean more towards it or the folk Americana because that's what seems to go down the best here, you know. Mm. Um, you mentioned your own mental health there and when you were leaving Sweden that that was sort of you know, part of the decision that you weren't feeling well mentally. How are you feeling these days? You seem to be in, in quite a positive place at the moment. Yeah, so like I think every day you have to check in with yourself and like you know, I'm going through things in life right now that would have probably caused me a lot greater difficulty if I wasn't where I am now and what and the process that I do every day. You know, I take time to to make sure I'm centered. And because everybody everybody suffers all the time. Like there's there's no there's no day that isn't without its struggle or a week or whatever, a month and so I'm definitely got more of a grip on how I handle situations or how I come across or I don't let things build to the point where it's too much. And yet, don't get me wrong, I'm like, you know, I'm right there with people, you know, when when things go wrong, but your mental health is extremely important when you're good as well. So I don't I don't just do things to make myself better when things are bad. I'm making sure that I'm keeping it up on a daily basis so it when it does get bad that I can handle it better. Mm. So I think when people look at somebody like I'm an advocate for it, but I also suffer. So that's what I want to I want people to know. It's not like you suddenly become healed and you're totally fine and rid of things. They'll still be there, but it's just how you cope and handle them um, becomes a lot more, you know, um, it, it's, it, it's more doable, I guess, you know. Because yeah. you were always somebody who was very interested in, in physical fitness. And is it the same thing that, you know, mental, mental health and sort of mental fitness is something that you kind of have to work on as if you were going to the gym, you know? You're not going to be able to run a marathon if you don't sort of build up to it. Do you feel the same way about mental health? Is it something that you have to work on in a similar way? 100%. You are the body that you are in. If you are not looking after it, with your diet, with your exercise and with your mental and emotional, then how are you going to think that you're going to give anything good and positive out of that? That doesn't mean, you know, I think a lot of people feel like, oh, well, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. But you really have to put in work into your own body. And that's all aspects of it, emotional, mental and physical. And if you're not doing all three of those or a combination of every day then you know you're going to feel the effects of it so I'm a huge advocate for the physical side of things too because the physical means that the mental will be kept sharp Hmm. and when you have when you keep up with physical and that can just simply be movement you don't have to go to a gym and you know lifting weights and doing all these things it's just moving your body making sure that you're getting good nutrients but that you're actually um, physically raising your heart rate so that your dopamine and serotonin levels and everything just everything benefits to your body moving your digestive system and it's catch 2022 oh i keep saying 2022 i've done that all weekend (laughs) catch 22 what am i like um that could could be the name that could be the name of your autobiography now catch 2022 i 
swear to God, every time I said that this weekend, I kept saying catch 2022. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing? Um, but yeah, it's, it, 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 I think when people feel bad, then they eat bad and then they look bad and then it's a cycle, you know? Mm. So I think catching yourself and doing one small change will help in other areas in your life. And I'm an advocate for it. And I'm, I can promise you that it works perfectly for me, but also with people I know who do it and all the sciences behind it, you know, the brain, the brain body connection. It's just, it's huge, you know, before, like, I'm not against medicating if you need it short term, but it should not be a long term fix. Mm. And so everything, everything on us, whether we have uh, an ailment on our body or something's coming out on the skin or you're feeling a certain way, it comes from within everything. So you can mask things, you can put creams over things, you can do it. But if you're not looking at what's coming from within and for most people, stress is the biggest, you know, killer uh, of all time. Like it, it's, it's what most people go to their doctors about. Hmm. Um, and that can simply, it's not like your stress is going to just dissipate, but you can absolutely manage stress and manage your lifestyle if you just have a good mental health, which is helped by physical movement and you know know whatever way you want to meditate praying you know uh you know people have their own way of of dealing and coping so i i i'm a big advocate for that 100 percent. and there's a lot of science to back it too so but i i encourage people if you're if you don't know where to start use the body that god gave you you don't have to know how to use a machine in a gym in fact most machines are not built for your body uh, or yours specifically so you know you can go for a walk go for a run do squats you know you, you have bands get your own little thing you don't even have to you don't have to leave your house to even you know get that movement in but i encourage it hmm. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's one of those things that, you know, years ago, I remember I, I hurt me back years ago and I couldn't move for about a year and, you know, playing football and, and getting out and doing things. That was my social outlet as well. And I was miserable for the year or so. It was in 2015. I still remember, you know, almost the dates, you know, and how much better I felt when I was able to do those things again. Does music play a part now? Not your own professional career, Claire, but do you listen to music as part of that sort of mental health regimen? Are there things that you listen to that you find inspiring or that lift you up? It's odd because as a musician, I don't listen to music ever. Mm. Like I, I do if I, if I need to, but I actually listen a lot to like uh, scientists and neurological podcasts, and 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 I and I love listening to sermons. Like I, I there's a few pastors I listen to with good messages for the day, and so I'm more that. But that's just me personally. Like a lot of people listen to music because it. it fuel them and I guess because I'm in the industry typically and I will listen to it, it it just it depends on the day and what I want to you know if it's worship music yes I like to listen to music that has some form of a message or I can learn something from mm-hmm. um or if somebody recommends an artist, then I'll, I'll definitely put them on. But most times I'm listening to podcasts and, and I'm interested in what other people or athletes or, um, you know, entrepreneurs, whatever, um, are talking about. And because I, you know, I do a lot of cold plunging and saunas and, you know, there's other things that I do that I'm always researching and looking to and I'm very interested. So, um but music is very healing. And so I find that if you are uh, looking for an outlet, music definitely is a communicative skill that people can tune into. You know, I've, I've a certain song, just for example, I swear that a lot of vets listen to or suicide victim families listen to or people who are in a funk, they listen to it and know it's, it's very inspiring, I've been told. And so that's the power of a song or music. So it can also be healing for others. And sometimes for myself, like, you know, hmm. either a song I've written myself that has a message I need to listen to or a song by somebody else. So, yeah, absolutely. Music plays a big role, but it also plays a role um, 
just whatever you ingest you typically put out there so if you're listening a lot to music that has an undertone of demonic uh you know a feeling to it or it's very very depressing then that's going to have an effect on your body the same way the news or anything tragic does it doesn't serve you well to sit down with that if you need to for a song or two find you know whatever get in your feels but nothing positive comes from ingesting anything negative into your body and that's with food or people or mindset you know so again that's that plays a role in in people's uh, mental health as well so the more positive things you're listening to uh you're better off you know all around for your for your own mental health yeah where can people find your work, Claire? Where can they hear you playing? Is it Spotify that we need to go to and Claire Cunningham that we need to search for? Or where can they find you? Where's the best way to support you? Honestly, any of the platforms that stream music, I'm on them. Um, so if you type in my name, Claire Cunningham, and that's C-L-A-R-E, uh, Cunningham, um, the, my website has all of my links, um, kind of, whatever your preferred listening service are, you can kind of link up on that. And it's just clairecunninghammusic.com. But yeah, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, um, Pandora, you know, anywhere that really has a streaming platform, I'll be on there, you know. Um, or, or that's that's the hope. But the last time I checked, I'm on there. So. <laughs> Grand. And of course, if anybody wants you to play at a festival or a gig or that kind of thing, you'll be playing at least one Irish festival of the 350 or Celtic festival that you apply to. But, I, <laughs> but I'm sure if they follow you on yeah. Instagram or on Facebook, they'll be able to find out where you're playing in the future as well. Yes, absolutely. So I, I run all my socials and do all that stuff too. So typically, uh, if anybody wants to know specifically where I'm playing, you can always read reach out to me and I'll do my best to reply but otherwise my bigger festivals and tours um, I I have linked on my website there or on Instagram and, and Facebook I'm very active so I do my very best to inform people of, of where I'm at and what I'm doing you know Claire Cunningham, a one-woman music industry, a one-woman Irish music industry in Nashville, Tennessee thank you so much for talking to me and drive carefully my sister Listen, thank you, and uh, I wish you all the best with everything. And uh, you know, I really appreciate any any platform to to speak, especially when it comes to mental health. So, um, you know, I really appreciate that, Philip. And you know, us us foreigners over here in different countries will will hopefully rule the world one day. We'll have to stick together, won't we? Yes. <laughs> Of all the time I have spent away Year on year, day by day I'll take with me my memories Dear Aaron's Isle in my heart will always be Aaron in Bokree Aaron in Do you cry for the absence I left behind? For when I dream, I dream about the days gone by Missing you out on the long, hard road There you go, the magnificently talented Claire Cunningham there, C-L-A-R-E. Go look her up on Spotify. That song is a little snippet of a tune called Éireann i Mochri, which I think will be dear to the hearts of many of the listeners of the Global Gale podcast. Uh, you'll find a bunch of other stuff there, some of her more country stuff, some of her more rock stuff, and she, she has a load of great tunes on there. There's a new single out now on Spotify as well, and just check all that out and support her any way you can. And if you happen to see her turning up at a festival or doing a gig anywhere near, 
near Nashville or anywhere in America or if you have a gig to offer her you can get in touch with me or you can go and find her on social media and she's a great follow on social media because uh, she has this really great sort of you know uh, rock slash Americana image going on at the moment and as you will have heard there just a fantastic person full of energy and full of uh, positivity and good vibes 